Imagine soaking in a natural hot spring surrounded by the mountains as cherry blossoms delicately flutter to the ground. Picture yourself travelling by bullet train to the foothills of Mount Fuji or sipping tea as you watch two sumos wrestle. Looking for your next cruise destination? Then make sure you watch today's Planet Cruise Weekly as we explore Japan. Hello and welcome to episode 61 of Planet Cruise Weekly, where today, due to popular demand and due to the many requests that we get in every week, we're actually going to take a look at cruising around Japan. Now, in case you haven't seen me before, my name's Keith. I'm an ex-cruise director. I've spent most of my life traveling either on ships or off, and I tend to host these Planet Cruise Weeklies, and I'm joined by different people every week. Today, it's one of our Planet Cruise video team. You may have seen him last week, uh, the wonderful Mr. Paul. How are you, Paul? Oh, I'm good, thanks, Keith. Now, you are the face of our Planet Cruise News Reports. Cruise News, yeah. That, that take, when, when does that come out? On, That's on every YouTube? Friday. Every Friday. And they click, click the link, uh, you go straight to the, the playlist for that and you can catch the latest episode. So that's just picking people up to date with the latest news within the industry. And if you haven't yet subscribed to our YouTube channel, why not what you're waiting for? It's free and there's loads of great video footage that you can get access to that will tell you about the destinations and also about some of the wonderful ships. Now, um, today, as we said, we're going to talk about Japan. And it's spread across an archipelago of 6,800 islands. It's a, it's a country of contrasts where modern cities that wouldn't look out of place in Blade Runner hide ancient walled bonsai gardens and where neon bright architecture and pink cherry blossoms buy for attention. Now the technology may be a glimpse of the future but the traditions and the customs are definitely stuck in the past. It's an incredible and fascinating fusion of East meets West. Now a big part of this exciting mix of culture is the fact that Japan only opened its gates to the Western world around 140 years ago and before World War II it had never been successfully invaded. So there's an incredible sense of authentic history and identity that sits alongside their unique enthusiasm for the West. High-speed trains whisk you from one end of the country to another with awe-inspiring punctuality. Garbage men attack their job with the vigour of a well-trained army and in the suburbs of a sprawling metropolis. You can catch the sight of a farmer tending his paddy field, then turn the corner and find yourself next to a neon festooned video game parlour. Now it's a marvellous assault on the senses and includes 19 UNESCO cultural and natural world heritage sites, many of which are accessible from major Japanese ports of call. Now after hearing all of that, you may wonder why so many of us are yet to visit this island nation in East Asia. And the reason, very simply, is that Japan has always been a very expensive destination to visit. That and the fact that the culture is so vastly different and for some travellers may be a little bit overwhelming at times. And this is why cruising is the perfect answer because it offers an affordable and more accessible way of exploring this amazing country. You can dip your toe into the culture, indulging in the samurai and sumo by day and then returning to your ship by night to enjoy steak and chips if you want, rather than maybe sushi and sake. Cruising Japan has changed the game and opened up this incredible country. And in fact, Japan has set a target of 5 million foreign tourists to visit on cruise ships in 2020. So let's start this by looking at when is best to actually visit Japan mm. and particularly with cruising. Well, Japan's climate is very much like the UK. It falls into four distinct seasons. And in fact, the UK winter season is the most popular time to visit as their rainy season, which goes between June uh, through to mid-July, has passed and the temperatures are a bit cooler. Though we say cooler, they never drop below 30 degrees Fahrenheit, which is uh, quite nice, quite comfortable. Yeah, cozy. Now, many companies extend their cruising season. They offer trips throughout autumn and spring, and these shoulder seasons can be a great way to grab yourself a bargain and experience some of Japan's most famous natural sites. Now, autumn is a riot of color, as the months of October through to early November usher in the renowned Japanese maples, ginkgos, and ash trees, turning yellow, orange, red, and purple. Now, yes, you will experience the occasional rainstorm, but the weather is mild, making it ideal for discovering Japan and the many regional festivals that dominate this season. Cruising Japan during the spring, which is March through to May, allows passengers to experience the famed cherry or sakura blossoms, and these tend to flower in March and April. The plum tree blossom, though, which is equally beautiful, tends to go a little bit earlier at the end of February, and the whole season is characterised by various blossom viewing festivals. It's absolutely magical. Now, but we would recommend avoiding summer, which can be scorching and humid, with average temperatures in the region reaching in the upper 80s. Now, whenever you go, though, be prepared for warm, humid temperatures and pack accordingly. 
So if you decide to visit Japan, what are the main port highlights? Well, we're going to start with the obvious one, aren't we, Paul, which is Tokyo. Once a, a tiny fishing village, now the largest metropolitan area in the world. It's a true glimpse into the future. The city is framed by the snow-covered slopes of Mount Fuji and a seemingly unlimited choice of shopping, restaurants, museums, temples and gardens await you to explore. Now, if you're like me and you enjoy the latest in technological innovations, then make sure you stop off at Dinky Guy, known as Electric Town. And of course, no visit to Tokyo is complete without sampling some freshly prepared sushi, mm. all washed down with a little sake. Love that. But to experience the contrast Japan is so famous for, head to the Meiji Shrine, which stands in a dense forest glade in the very heart of Tokyo, and take a few moments to reflect that this huge city was once a tiny fishing village called Edo. Now, a short distance from Tokyo, is Shimizu and this is your opportunity to explore the wonderful Mount Fuji which of course you would have seen in Tokyo and have an opportunity to visit in Tokyo if you want to by a bullet train but if you're going to here as well save it for Shimizu um, it's in the heart of the prime green tea growing regions of Japan and nearly half of all the tea that's cultivated domestically comes from the Shizuoka Highlands and in fact, experiencing a local tea house and its ornate ceremonies is a must when you're in this port. Now, it's a mountainous area, it's full of rivers and serene lakes, and offers some great hiking opportunities. But the main highlight here is Mount Fuji, which is absolutely stunning. It's the highest and most loved of Japan's three holy mountains. It towers over 12,000 feet above the Hakone National Park. And a real highlight is to visit the steaming sulfur springs and the thousand year old Fujian Shrine. Now for the best photos of the mountain, head out to the Miho no Matsubara, um, where the green pine trees stud the inlets of what's called Suruga Bay. And it offers you a brilliant panoramic snap over the foaming waves of the mountain. Okay, so next up we have Kobe. Now it's famous for its succulent beef and the port of Kobe is your gateway to ancient capital of Japan, Kyoto. Now this is the Japan of my imagination, ruled by the Shogun and his samurai, full of narrow lanes paved in stone and lined with wooden buildings that lead to cherry orchards hiding dinky temples and bonsai gardens where you might catch a glimpse of a passing geisha. Now, if you get the chance to visit Kyoto, you'll never forget it. But without doubt, I think our favourite tour here, if you get a chance to go to Kobe, is to visit a traditional sumo stable where you can observe Japan's famed wrestlers fight about of this ancient sport. Um, it's, a, it's a magical experience uh, and one that you'll never forget. Now, this is an amazing part of the country, and if none of that appeals, then do let me recommend also the Sake Brewery and Museum, where you can discover the history and sample the quality of the local fiery rice spirit. Now, next up we have Nagasaki, which is often described as the San Francisco of Japan. The city occupies verdant hills surrounded by a deep water bay. Now, for three centuries, Nagasaki was Japan's sole window on the world and is famously celebrated as a setting for Puccini's opera, Madame Butterfly. Reminders linger in the restored houses of European merchants and the Aura Church with its splendid stained glass windows. An essential part of any visit is the monuments dedicated to peace, located on the site where the second atom bomb exploded in August 1945. And if you have the time, taking the cable car up to Mount Inasi at nearly 1,100 feet high, this hill to the west of Nagasaki is known for its $10 million view. Okinawa is next, and it's my favorite stop in any Japanese itinerary. It's the birthplace of karate, and I have to do the wax on, wax off. No, yeah. yeah. Mr. Miyagi, and also the scene of bitter fighting in World War II. And it's a, it's a southern island of Japan with an exotic paradise and a, and a subtropical climate and crystal blue waters. And it's here that fishing, sailing, swimming and snorkeling are definitely king. Now the capital city is called Naha and it's a, a tropical atmosphere with a bit of a modern vibe. There is a, an ancient pottery district which has been producing ceramics since 1682, and there's lots of Asian-style covered markets. <laughs> now, for all two enthusiasts, venture to Okinawa's most popular diving spot, which is the wreck of the USS Emmons, and that was sunk in 1944 during World War II, or opt to stay dry and enjoy the 77 seawater tanks of the Churumi Aquarium, where you can see whale sharks, manta rays, and dolphins. But if you get a chance to go out and explore and, and water sports and relaxing on the beach isn't your kind of thing, then do head out to Shurakio. And this is a reconstructed castle of the Okinawan royal family. Uh, it's got an amazing walled gate with the iconic image of the um, Okinawan clan. And it can be found 
fact on Japan's 2000 yen note. So next up we have Mura-ran, which is one of the ports on the main island of Hokkaido. The northernmost of Japan's four main islands is known for its volcanoes, natural hot springs and ski areas. Relatively unspoiled, Hokkaido offers dramatic landscapes ranging from dense forests to serene lakes nestled in the calderas and is the perfect opportunity to relax in one of the natural springs as you soak it all up. Now the island capital, Sapporo, has a fantastic outdoor village museum to enjoy or there's the nearby traditional uh, Jidamura theme park where you can enjoy a thrilling ninja show. Some ships also dock at the bottom of the island at nearby Hakodote and it's here that you'll, if you do end up here, definitely, definitely visit what they call the Gurahu Pentagonal Fort. Again, forgive the pronunciation, uh, but it's a stunning military monument built around carp filled moats, landscape gardens and those world famous cherry trees. So now we've covered some of the main port highlights, what about the cruise companies and ships that visit this part of the world? Well, the major cruise lines who specialise in world cruises and grand tours such as Holland America, Cunard, PO and Azamara will call into one of two of the major Japanese ports such as Tokyo or Hiroshima. But more recently, a couple of lines have started home porting in Japan. Now, Princess is the pioneer in the market, home porting ships in Tokyo and Kobe and offering the best selection of port choices around Japan with 7 and 14 day itineraries. Several other major cruise companies have followed suit. Royal Caribbean are offering popular four, five and seven day routes sailing out of China. And Celebrity are also home porting for a shorter season out of Tokyo with some 11 to 14 night itineraries which often include stops in Taiwan and South Korea. And luxury lines Crystal, Oceana and Regent Seven Seas have several in-depth itineraries that include Japan as part of a wider East Asia itinerary, sailing out of Hong Kong and calling into China as well. Well, hopefully that's given you a little bit of an overview of what you get to enjoy if you do decide to cruise around Japan and we would recommend it, it's an amazing part of the world. Uh, but if you do decide to go, here are some of our top tips on what to do and what not to do and what to look out for. So the first one, Paul, is? Well, the first one is use the public transport. It's fast, it's cheap and it's efficient. I mean, taxis are widely available too and most run on the meter. Uh, if yours doesn't though, do make sure you agree a price before you leave. Yeah, that's good general uh, practice wherever you are in the world. Uh, definitely with Japan, try the local cuisine. J Japan is, is famous for its fresh seafood and its sushi culture, which is prevalent in the coastal cities and in the spicy katsu curries and broths of the inland regions. Miso soup, tea houses and sake are also famous exports that you simply must try when you're there. And because the hygiene standards are much higher than the rest of East Asia and Asia generally, you can sample these local delicacies without fear of gastric consequences. Mm. Now, if you have an overnight, then make sure you get off and explore in the evening. Most destinations completely transform once the sun sets and you'll see more local life. But speaking of the local life, Japanese culture is very calm and respectful, so try not to raise your voice and become agitated or you may cause offence. And finally, and this is serious, beware Japanese toilets. Uh, they are over-engineered and ruthlessly efficient. Um, and they don't just deal with waste, they remove any evidence that it ever existed. And the thing is they've got multiple functions that will without doubt confuse you. Even a standard loo, uh, you can, even with the standard loo, you can expect to get your bottom jet washed and blow dry. And it's not uncommon to find toilets with heated seats, uh, ones that play music and provide alternative scents. So, uh, <laughs> good luck. Yeah. This conversation's going down the pan. A boom boom. Ah. So, right. Uh, many thanks to everyone who did get in touch last week with various comments. Uh, Paul, if, if people do want to contact us to suggest themes, to give us some feedback, how do they do that? Well, it's very easy. You can email us at hello at planetcruise.co.uk. Or, of course, you can check us out on our Facebook and like us there as well. You can follow us on Twitter. And you can, of course, subscribe to us on our YouTube and comment on any of our videos there as well. And please do get in touch. We love to have your feedback. It shapes the shows uh, and it shapes what we do at Planet Cruise Weekly and really with the video footage generally. A big thank you to these people now um, who did get in touch. First of all, to Natalie Draper, uh, who said about last week's um, PCW, which was cruising for nature lovers, stunning footage. I would love to visit the penguins 
in their natural habitat. So thank you very much, Natalie. Hope you get a chance to go and visit those penguins. And Berwyn Thomas as well, who said it would be wonderful. I'd love to go as far south as I could on a cruise and see the penguins, whales, and other wildlife down there. So again, those were comments that were left uh, about last week's episode, episode 60 of Planet Cruise Weekly, which was so cruising 60, for yeah. nature lovers. So if you missed it, click the link and it will give you an opportunity. Uh, next week, we're going to be talking about a new river cruise line that we're yeah. working on. Amadeus. 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 Fantastic. So uh, make sure you join us and in the meantime, have a great week. Thanks for watching.